Ultrasound Terminology A legal disclaimer, this information is for educational use only, not intended to substitute for legal, clinical, or professional advice. We try to keep our information as accurate and timely as possible, but make no promises and guarantees it works for your local unique situation. The course objectives is students will be able to verbalize the importance of understanding ultrasound terminologies. They'll be able to understand the differences between ultrasound and sonography the different types of ultrasound, and the commonly used ultrasound terminologies. This topic is really important because for us to have a common language, we need to be able to be clear and consistent in how we communicate with research, clinical practices, communicating with our patient, and communicating with our colleagues. We need to have consistent terminology to avoid confusion and breakdowns of communications with payers, with the team, and safety. When it comes to precise definitions for procedures, diagnosis, how to report ultrasound words, we need to make sure that there is an approved list of policies, protocols around ultrasound terminology, acronyms, what's acceptable, what does it mean in your organization to use that word so everybody is on the same page. What is the difference between ultrasound and sonography? Let's go to the basics right now. Ultrasound refers to sound waves with frequencies higher than the upper audible limit of human hearing, typically above 20 kilohertz. Usage in a medical context has commonly been used for diagnostic images. They emit high frequently sound waves into the body and it echoes back used to create an image of internal organs, tissues, and blood flow. This image technique is non-invasive and does not involve the use of ionizing radiation. It is used in various specialties, particularly obstetrics and gynecology to monitor the baby's fetal development. It's used in cardiology for the heart function and general imaging of abdominal order, organs, muscle structures, just problems and issues that you need to be able to see internally that other testing systems may not be able to visualize. Sonography is also known in some situations as ultrasound sonography. It's the technique to use to look at the internal organs and structures of the body. Sonography specifically refers to the process of performing ultrasound exams and interpreting those results. So the ultrasound is the actual machine doing it, getting that, but the sonography is specifically to the process of performing that exam. It's done by healthcare practitioners and ultrasound technicians. It's specialized equipment used to perform ultrasound scans on patients, capture the images and interpret those images to aid in the diagnosis. Sonography is widely used in medical practice for versatility, safety, and ability for real-time imaging. In summary, ultrasounds refer to the highest frequency sound waves themselves. Sonography refers to the medical image technique used by those sound waves to produce a diagnostic image. Ultrasound technology is the foundation upon which sonography operates, enabling healthcare practitioners to visualize the internal structures for diagnostic purposes. So these are the different types of ultrasounds that are available. There's 2D, there's 3D, there's 4D, and it has to do with the dimensions of what you're seeing your scan. So a 2D ultrasound scan creates a two-dimensional cross-sectional flat image. 3D has to do with an angle to create a round three-dimensional image of the internal organs, the baby, whatever it is you're trying to visualize. 4D ultrasounds use an angle resembling movement under the skin in a moving motion, so more Doppler, blood flow, things like that. Aortic ultrasounds, scanning the aorta, the body's main blood vessel that carries the blood to the heart, typically ruling out abdominal aortic aneurysms. There's also cranial ultrasounds, scanning the brain. It's used sometimes with babies and fontanelles and bleeds and different neurological diagnosis and point-of-care ultrasounds.
There's echocardiograms. It has to do with the heart and the cardiac muscles, the blood measurements. How is the heart functioning? There's endoscopy ultrasounds. Echo is the shorter version many people will use. It's an ultrasound procedure used with going down the esophagus to measure the respiratory and digestive systems, usually used with diagnosing diseases, disorders of the lungs, stomach, lymph nodes, upper digestive tract, liver, and pancreas. The ones that more people are familiar with, obstetric, ultrasounds, they scan the lower abdomen to detect and monitor the growing baby during the pregnancy, placenta, gross anomalies. It typically occurs around 12 weeks gestation, just depending on diagnosis condition, and again, at 20 weeks for an anatomy scan. If there's obvious concerns and issues, it'll be done more frequently. A pelvic ultrasound is more for gynecological. It sometimes is used in really early pregnancy. It's used with a transvaginal ultrasound probe typically. Renal ultrasounds are looking at the kidney, the function, see if there's tumors, gross anomalies, cysts, stones present. Thyroid ultrasound scanning the neck and the thyroid gland, checking for cysts, nodules, tumors to make sure that the thyroid is not enlarged, it's not being overactive or underactive. Transabdominal ultrasounds look at the abdominal cavity, particularly the organs of pancreas, kidneys, bladder, spleen, and gallbladder. Transcranial Doppler is measuring the velocity of the blood flow throughout the brain. It's used to test for brain aneurysms, strokes, and blockages, particularly endocranial stenosis. Transrectal ultrasounds can be used to rule out with prostate concerns. Rectal transvaginal probes can be used in many different reasons if you need to do a lower GI tract, but most of the time it's for prostate cancer rule out. Transvaginal ultrasounds can be done in many different sound waves and it's bouncing off the organs. It could be checked for IUD position, gynecological pain, abnormal uterine bleeding, pelvic pain, ruling out ovarian cysts, unable to see a baby in the uterus and ectopic pregnancy, checking out the fallopian tubes and ruling out a lot of different things with the transvaginal. Common ultrasound terminologies, A mode, or amplitude modulation is an imaging technique that focuses on the different heights of amplitude spikes, such as in a heartbeat monitor. Acoustic enhancement or posterior enhancement is the ability for sound waves to travel without return echoes because an anechoic space is full of fluid, such as a cyst or bladder, creating a black space in the sonogram. Acoustic shadowing area in which sound waves encounter a dense structure such as a tumor or fetus and all of the waves are being reflected. Aliasing phenomenon, imaging error that occurs in color flow Doppler and pulsed wave Doppler scans. Sampling rate is insufficient to record a direction and or velocity. Anoechic structure, body chambers without echoes, fluid filled structures that appear black on the sonogram. Anterior or ventral position means in the front. Attenuation is the tendency for ultrasound waves to decrease as they travel through tissue. Axial or longitudinal resolution, minimum distance between two reflectors during the ultrasound beam direction. B mode or brightness modulation, an imaging technique that focuses on the brightness of the echo, not the amplitude spikes such in a typical 2D ultrasound. Color flow Doppler. Doppler scan that measures blood flow by attributing color to different velocities of movement. Coronal scanning plane. The ultrasound beam enters the body from the lateral, could be either the right or left side in their direction. Distal position away from the point of origin or trunk. Doppler shift, Doppler effect, Change in frequency as the transducer moves from one source of sound echoes to another. Doppler ultrasound, procedure named after physicist Christian Doppler, in which sound waves bounce off circulating red blood cells to measure blood flow, often used to detect the heartbeat of a fetus. Gel coupland, 
Gel used in an ultrasound scan functions as the medium from which the energy of the sound is transmitted between the transducer and the patient's skin. Hyperechoic structures that return greater echo of sound waves and appear bright white on a sonogram. Hypoechoic structures which return weak echoes of sound wave and appear gray or black on a sonogram. Inferior position, lower away from the head, lateral position towards the side, lateral resolution, minimum distance between two reflectors perpendicular to the ultrasound beam direction. M mode or motion mode, early ultrasound modality that shows the time motion display of the ultrasound wave, typically displayed as a single scan line, not an actual visual image. Medial position towards the middle or center. Mechanical probes, a transducer that has a motor inside. Posterior or dorsal position towards the back. Power Doppler, highly sensitive Doppler technique that detects moving matter. Proximal position towards the point of origin or trunk. Pulse wave Doppler. Doppler techniques that uses short and quick pulses of sound to measure the velocity of blood in a specific location. Reverberation artifact. It's an event when which sound waves become trapped between two parallel structures and bounce between them before returning as echoes. Sagittal scanning plane. The ultrasound beam enters the body from anterior or posterior front or back position. Scanning plane, direction at which the ultrasound beam enters the body. Sonogram, image produced from an ultrasound. Sound waves, waves of energy that are transmitted from a transducer through the gel couplant, skin and tissue. They return as echoes after being reflected by structures in the body. Speckle noise, noise interference that reduces the quality of an image resolution in a sonogram. Superior position, the higher towards the head. Time gain compensation, TGC, a technique in which signal gain increases as time passes used to overcome attenuation. Transducers, the devices that actually produce the sound waves in ultrasounds and send return echoes to a computer, which compiles them into a sonogram. Transverse scanning plane. The ultrasound beam enters the body from anterior, posterior, or lateral, front, back, right, or left position. Scans in a diagonal or transverse angle. Ultrasound frequency, ultra, or inaudible sound frequency at which ultrasounds operate ranges from 2.5 megahertz to 15 megahertz. Humans can hear sound waves no higher than 20,000 hertz. Ultrasound scans, a medical procedure in which sound waves are beamed into the body and their return echo enables technicians to visualize what is happening under the skin. Velocity of ultrasound, the speed at which sounds can travel through the different parts of the body, measured in meters per second. 1,540 meters per second for, for soft tissue, 1,580 meters per second for bone. As a conclusion, Understanding ultrasound terminology is crucial because it ensures clear and consistent communication in the clinical practice and continued research development. Consistent terminology helps to avoid confusion when conveying information between colleagues, patients, insurance payers, and the greater healthcare industry. Healthcare providers have a challenge of being able to give great quality care and to be able to consistently communicate what are the terms definitions with ultrasounds that everybody can clearly understand. Ultrasound and sonography are related terms but often used interchangeably even though they refer to different aspects of the same medical imaging technology. 
by mastering these ultrasound technologies and terminologies, it's really essential to be able to express those definitions, to be able to understand them clearly. If someone's communicating with you, you actually can visualize in your head what they're talking about. We need to make sure our documentation, our image reports, our communication to our colleagues and patients has the highest quality possible to make sure there's no misdiagnosis, there's no errors, there's no delay in management needs because of that breakdown of communication and using the wrong terms and definitions at different points in their care. 